All right. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a different call. And for a lot of you guys who are organizing your own communities, your own Zoom calls, a lot of you may be wondering how I organize these and what I do for these types of calls. Uh, and to be honest, I literally have no clue what I'm going to say whenever I organize these calls, whenever I jump on something like this. I like to get in my heart and just, uh, just ad lib what comes out. And so uh, this is a different topic that we're going to talk about, but it's going to go a lot deeper than um, what we've done in deeper in, in other sessions. So what we've done in other sessions is set a bit of a platform, which I'll give you a bit of a reminder of. And, um, and then what we can do is just have a different look because what we're going to do in this uh, call is have a different look about ourselves, why we behave the way we behave, why we have patterns that we now call our personality and, uh, and give you the option of creating a shift if you'd like to create a shift. So DJ, Stephen, welcome guys. Um, so what I will do first is remind you of, a, of the foundations of what we've been doing. And uh, welcome, Paul. I'll give you a foundation of what we've been doing to give you guys a bit of a reminder and to do some internal reflection. And then we can really start to uh, dissect what's happening in terms of when we form personalities, when we form particular traits, and what that may mean for us today. There may be some patterns that you that are serving you immensely, but there may be some that aren't serving you in terms of the level of success, the level of happiness, the level of fulfillment, the level of joy and abundance that you want to feel. There may be some patterns that you want to uh, that you want to reconsider as if they're if they're serving you or not. And it'll give you a different option. This different level of awareness will just give you an option of what you want to what you want to do moving forward about that. So this is the these are the types of calls where everyone's in their business day in day out, right? We're all in our head. We're all getting all the fears, doubts, and frustrations. Or maybe we're planning on something in the future, or worried about something in the past, whatever it may be. These are the calls where we start to look in and start to remind ourselves of what's true, and then we can think back on the week that we've had and the week forward and start to remind ourselves, ah, yes, I was stuck here, or I was lost here, or I had particular patterns that I wasn't aware of. So what we love to do to start off is just to take a deep breath and out. Isn't it weird that we finally just get the opportunity to do that now? Deep breath in and out. As we all welcome Cheryl to the call. And a deep breath in and out. And just pay attention to your body. Just pay attention to your body, all the vibrations, sensations, stresses, relaxations. Just feel your body at the moment. Just feel what you feel right now with no resistance, no judgment, just feeling your body. And as you feel your body, I want to remind you that what's occurring in your body, what's coming up in terms of all the emotions, all the thoughts, they are not you. If you are able to observe your emotions, if you're able to observe your thoughts that are emerging, that means you are not them. You are the space. You are the space that all that exists in. And it's in the moments when you remind yourself of that, that you can start to see there's more of a spiritual side of you, right? A side that's, that's bigger than any problem, bigger than any challenge, bigger than any emotion, bigger than any result. Right? There's a spiritual side of you that knows, uh, that knows more of the truth of what's happening, of what's going on. So that's the side of you that can start to have a look at what we're about to talk about. So to start this off, I might remind you that all these patterns that are emerging, all the patterns of emotions, all the patterns of behavior, all the patterns of you know, constant thinking, a lot of them are conditioned, right? They're conditioned 
in our childhood. They're conditioned when we're younger, when we're little toddlers, right? I'd love to get you guys to imagine little five-year-olds. Like when we're five years old, and even before that, even well before our first memory, a lot of these patterns are conditioned in us. And why are they conditioned in us? At that time, they are what we thought we had to do and who we had to be in order to be enough, in order to be worthy, in order to be worthy of love. Because in terms of being loved, that links to our unconscious survival. Right? If I'm not loved, I won't survive. So we adapt. Depending on whose love we craved the most growing up, whether it be your parents, grandparent, a caregiver, we molded our behavior, we molded our emotions, we molded our patterns in a way that allows us to attain that love. They may have been modeling who we want to model. They may have been resisting, right? We resist it, we do something different, we be the black sheep in order to get that attention and love, whatever it may be. So this spiritual side of you, you can observe all of that, right? And you might want to pay attention to your heart. You might want to pay attention to the thing that's beating your heart, the thing that goes a lot deeper than this. This spiritual side of you existed well before any of these patterns formed. So that's why this spiritual self, this space, this level of knowing can start to see these patterns from a different level. So what I'll have you do is, and what I might offer to you guys is if you are able to observe your childhood, what comes to mind? If you're able to observe from this space, you might want to pay attention to your heart, pay attention to the thing that's beating your heart. When you observe your past when you observe your childhood what was it like and who did you think you had to be in order to be worthy in order to be enough in order to be loved for me personally i had to achieve like like many of you on this call achievement was a big thing had to do well in school had to do well in sports and it's not like my parents would like hand me every time I lost it's just they would praise me when I won and so I unconsciously linked that means love that means survival right another pattern of mine is becoming what what I've found now to be the clown right the class clown or, or the joker right the comedian I can make any any light-hearted banter in any situation right any situation so that's a pattern that's formed within me. That's a pattern that was conditioned. And now growing up, that pattern that I thought I needed to be, like I needed to make jokes and make people laugh in order to be enough, in order to be worthy, that's been conditioned into my adulthood now, where now that's just become a personality trait. That's just become who I am. And that's now what people see me as. That's now what I see me as. The real question is, is that the real me? Is that the real me? Right? Or is there something deeper that I've forgotten? Is there something deeper that I've disowned? Is there something deeper that I've pushed down, that I've neglected by making people laugh and by being lighthearted and you know, clearing the, clearing the space in social situations by laughing and making jokes and having silly puns is that the real me? Or is there both sides of me? I've just conditioned one and disowned the other one, right? So if you guys want to type in the chat, make sure if you want everyone to see it, there's the, uh, make sure the chat is set to all panelists and attendees. If you want to share, what patterns come to mind? I see Cheryl, Definitely to be an achiever, yes. Always top grades in all subjects. Exactly, exactly. That's who you thought you need to be. Now, I'm sure you can see all sides of us uh, were serving us, right? This was serving us until now, until we get a different level of awareness, right? So 
I've been diving in deep on this stuff and I'm studying what's called the Hoffman process. So I thought to help you guys, I'd read out a few things, a few patterns, a few character traits, and you can see which ones resonate with you to give yourself a different level of awareness. And I thought after this call, what I'll do is I'll put a post in the group. I've already written up a post that's ready to be um, published, but it lists, it lists out everything that's in here in terms of all of all the personality traits and all the life roles. So you can start to see, you can start to identify what you, what you identify with now. And then you can start to question, is it something that's serving you or is there another side of you that you also want to condition so that you can have a look at the deeper sides of you and you can have that option of, of just having both, right? Cause I can see it served me immensely to be lighthearted and funny, right? It even serves me now. It's very, uh, it's a very good tool to have. But once that conditioned response is overdeveloped, all of a sudden, if that's my go-to and I've, I've, I've like pushed down the side of me that can have an actual serious conversation with someone, all of a sudden I'm, I'm cutting off a side of me. And the results in my life in the past and even up until now has been my relationships have been very shallow, even with my friends, even with my family, even with people in, uh, in a community setting, right? My, my relationships have been very, very shallow because I just stick to the conditioned side of me that says be lighthearted and funny, right? So it would, it pays dividends for me to look deep and still, and still love the side of me that can be funny and have a joke, but also to condition the side of me that, can actually dive in deeper, right? And ask someone with, with in, in all seriousness how they're doing and have a deeper conversation, right? So I'll read out a few characteristics, a few traits, a few uh, roles that you may have found yourself in that you identify with or other people would describe you as and just see a few of these of what resonates with you. Um, so the rebel, the clown, the black sheep, right? The slob, the fighter, a genius, a peacemaker. I'm a peacemaker, right? The baby, hero, victim, sufferer, a troublemaker, right? Misfit, a success, failure, the angry one, the wild one a disappointment, maybe something like the teacher, a spoiled one, invisible, a goody goody. Another side of me is a goody goody. Like I, when I, whenever I try to, uh, you know, feel like I need to bend the rules with something, a side of me says, no, you should not do that. Right. There's, there's a side of me that's like, no way. It's just not who I am, who I am. Right. So they're just a few. There's a lot. There's a there's a lot more that uh, that I'll I'll put in the post, as well as um, as well as some other patterns, as well as some other roles that you may have found yourself in that you may want to start to question. So if you guys have um, if you guys have started to identify a few of these, uh, feel free to share. Feel free to share, and we can maybe we can even get um, on, on maybe get some people to talk about. Because what we'll do next is really start to dive in deep and have a look at what these are and what you can do about them. Um, Kerry, no anger, yes. Barbara, I'm a rule follower. Me too. Maybe we should break some rules together. I've been an emotional sufferer. Yes. Cool. Awesome. Laughter keeps me connected, says DJ. Absolutely another side of me that is emerging. Awesome. Cheryl, my pattern is taking responsibility for everything. I know I just read yours out, Cheryl, and it says to all panelists. So if you want everyone to see it, just type all panelists and attendees. If you just want it to me, maybe I shouldn't have read it out. 
Yes, Stephen. Similar, the happy-go-lucky clown. Yes. I can't really read the longer ones. It'll take me a long time to read the longer ones. But I'll try and get the essence of what he's saying. Also, Cheryl says, also the disappointment. Yeah. Powerful, hey? Powerful to be aware of this stuff. All right, Jane, the black sheep. Definitely the black sheep. Witty, survival, fight if you have to, yes. People pleaser, obedient. Man, how many people are the people pleaser? That's a huge one. Victim, achiever. I'm the responsible goody goody, says Cheryl. Awesome, how good is this level of awareness, right? Just to open up. And I want you to be aware when you do list these things, when you are aware of these things, also notice if there's a side of you that has the judgment, a side of you that has a judgment about these things, right? Saying, I shouldn't be this way, I should be feeling this way, I should be something else, right? Pay attention to that as well. Because really what, what all of this is about is loving all sides of you. Because you can see with me, so one pattern is the joker, right? Is the clown. And I've, shun down a side of me i've pushed down unconsciously pushed down a side of me that is serious i can have a serious conversation with someone that can open up about something and because i've done that i've actually disowned a side of myself which takes a lot of unconscious energy to keep pushing that down so when i started becoming a coach three four years ago I actually freaked out a little bit and said, holy shit, I'm going to have to start. I'm going to have to start talking to people in a serious manner. And that scared me a little bit. That's something I'm not used to. And it's something I had to condition. And I've been able to do it with clients and even with people in the community here. Um, but it's still something I'm developing for my family, for my friends, all those sort of things, because it's something that I'm, I'm wanting to condition because I can, when you, when you love both sides of you, you can start to be strategic of how you'd like to use those qualities rather than one being overdeveloped, right? So can you all type in, I'm interested, maybe type in, yes, I'm sorry if I can't read everyone's, um, I love all of the engagement and even if I can't read them, everyone else is starting to read your comments as well. So it's really, really helping. Um, Cheryl, you're still set to all panelists, so I'm the only one that's able to see your, your messages. Um, but maybe type in yes in the, in the chat box. If you are starting to see, there you go, Cheryl. If you're starting to see that you've dis disowned a side of you, at least one side of you, you've disowned. Because part of you have said, Part of you has said, I need to not be this and I need to be something else in order to feel like I'm worthy, in order to feel like I'm enough, in order to feel like I'm worthy of love. Maybe type in yes if you've started to identify a side of you that you've disowned and a side of you which you've conditioned, right? Cheryl says yes. Andrew says yes. Cool. Jared says yes. Perfect. Awesome. This is such good level of awareness, isn't it? It's such a good level of awareness to see that there are sides of us which we've conditioned. There are sides of us which we've done that. There are sides of us. Awesome. So Stephen has a question. Maybe Stephen, if you want to write it in the Q&A section, um, I'll be able to get that. It's really hard to get to the questions in the, in the chat box, um, but feel free to put it in the, um, in the Q&A so I, I won't miss it and I'll be able to refer back to that later. And let, if, if I do miss it in the chat. Interesting enough, I'm breaking a pattern now, says Cheryl. I'm about, to go into, I'm about to go sing for the first time in years and years, just to practice, but still, awesome. Cool. So you can see maybe if you weren't, um, maybe if you weren't pulled to sing or if you're shying away from that, there's a side of you that you'll be, there's a side of you that, uh, plays that role, plays the role of someone who doesn't step out in the spotlight, right? Something like that. So Barbara, yes, when, yes, when the quiet side of me came out, people asked what was wrong with me. <laughs> awesome.
cool. So have a feel about that. Have a feel of what sides of you you're conditioning, what sides of you are conditioned. And what I offer is for you to dive in deep and to start to see, I've seen your, your question here, Stephen. So I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. So when, um, when you started to see these patterns, when you started to see these personalities that have emerged, what you can start to see is that that pattern has existed because there's a side of you that needs to be loved, right? There's an internal five-year-old that just wants to feel loved. That just wants to feel wanted, wants to feel needed, wants to feel safe. So we develop these patterns, develop these, these personalities in which we think we have to be. So the personality is almost like the answer. That's the answer to the child who feels unloved. Can you see that? In entrepreneurship, people who have their own business, often achievement is the answer to the, the side of you who feels unloved. I've called myself so many times in the last couple of months since I started to meditate two hours a day, that this is something that's heavily, heavily on my mind at the moment. So can you start to see there's a side of you, an internal side of you, there's a five-year-old within you who feels unloved and unconsciously your answer has been to, to behave in this way, to, to uh, condition this pattern, right? To be the achiever, for example, to go out there and achieve. What I want to offer for you guys to do right now, so you can start to step back and start to resolve some of these internal conflicts that are at the very core of who you are. I want you to just pay attention to that five-year-old and give that five-year-old some space to just feel unloved, to feel unloved. Listen to that five-year-old who's scared, who has fear, doubt, frustration, and start to notice what they're saying. What's the core message? What's the core sentence this five-year-old's saying? The five-year-old is not saying go out and achieve. The five-year-old is not saying we need to be a certain way. The five-year-old is saying a core sentence. The five-year-old is saying something along, along the lines of, I, I'm scared. I feel unloved. I don't know what to do. Right? Something along those lines. So listen to your internal five-year-old and give them the space. Feel what it feels like to be unloved. Give yourself permission to fully feel what it's like to be unloved. You might want to breathe. You might want to pay attention to your heart. You might want to pay attention to the, your body and all the physical sensations while you do this. Pay very close attention to the physical sensations. and allow yourself finally the space to feel unloved, the space, the space to feel unloved with no judgment, with no resistance, with even no answer. You don't need an answer to this. You don't need to say, I will do this so you feel loved. Just allow yourself the space to feel unloved, to feel unloved in your body. I woke up this morning at about 6.30 and I, I stayed in my bed for about half an hour doing this. Just feeling that feeling of unloved. With no judgment, no resistance, just feeling it. Allow that five-year-old to feel that. Because these patterns have been the answer for you, consciously or unconsciously. So when you finally give yourself the permission to feel unloved and to process that in your body, you can start to see things in a very different way.
You start to feel things in a very different way. You start to develop a different relationship with yourself in a different way. And I started to ask myself this morning, would I be willing to feel this all day? Would I be willing to feel this all day? Would I be willing to uh, carry this around with me for as long as it takes? And the answer is yes. I'd be willing to feel this all day. I'd be willing to carry this around for as long as it takes for me to develop that connection with myself, right? a deeper connection with myself. So just feel it. Feel what comes up for you. And notice how the patterns of behavior, the patterns, of, uh, the patterns that are being conditioned have been your conscious or unconscious answer to this feeling, right? So next time you feel like you need to go out and achieve or make something happen or figure out the way, you start to take a step back and say, if I'm doing this in order to be loved, maybe I'll just sit for a moment and just give myself the permission to listen to this five-year-old. Give this five-year-old the permission to just feel unloved. Because that way you won't be at resistance to yourself. You won't be at resistance to any side of you. I need to love the side of me that can joke around just as much as the side of me that can be serious, right? Similar to you, similar to, similar to me. I need to love the side of me that can achieve just as much as the side of me that can fail. Just as much as the side of me that can get things perfect, I need to love the side of me that can make mistakes. Can you start to see the freedom in that? Can you start to see what, what happens internally when you resolve these internal conflicts and allow yourself to feel that? Allow yourself to feel whatever's coming up with no resistance and no judgment. All of a sudden, if you do this, if you, if you are able to have this as a routine and practice this, you all of a sudden leave room for space, for ideas, for creativity, for flow, for alignment. You can start to feel what's aligned with you. You can start to feel what's a pull. And that's why it's so important in business because you can start to feel what's a pull rather than what you're pushing to do. And when you're pulled, I'm sure you can feel so much creativity, so much flow, right? Your level of success is really inevitable and it's unlimited because you're in such flow and creativity that anything's possible. I've told people many, many times this, this group and its expansion and its, and its engagement has really come because I just, after meditation, I just felt a pull to do this, to make this happen. And even while I meditate, I just feel so much love for you guys that I just, I'm blown away by the, your level of commitment to developing yourself and looking internally where my, my heart is just pulled to continue to give, to continue to give uh, different exercises, different ways in which we can uh, engage with each other, right? Because my brain's on fire because it feels like a pull. It feels aligned to connect with you guys and organize these calls. Right. I'm sure you can feel from my energy. I don't feel obligated to be here. Right. If one person was on this call, it would be exact. I'd, the same thing would be flowing out of me. So allow yourself to feel that. Continue to feel it. While you continue to feel that, I'll go to Stephen's question. Tyson, if we're wearing a persona or a mask and we feel we've pushed something down, but not fully aware of it. What is that? But not fully aware of what that something is. Yeah, totally. So if you're not aware of it, that's fine as well. Right? That's fine as well. Uh, also says, how do we know that we're not just bringing up a side that we think we want? A new mask or persona. This could be false and creating a new persona, which is not the genuine one. Just feel whatever's coming up because it may be false. You, instead of trying to force something, right? When you just sit with it, 
what will emerge is meant to emerge. If that's false, great. With your heightened level of awareness, as it keeps rising, you'll see it as false. But if it's, if it's false and it's emerging, it's meant to emerge. One thing that I'm uh, starting to really understand is that uh, people are really, uh, people are really always in their highest. It's just a level of different consciousness. So sometimes I'll, so for example, to Stephen, this might help. I could bring up a persona that says, oh, I need to be more of this. And so I'll, can, I'll, I'll bring that up and love it. But then that's my heightened awareness at that time. But then as I start meditating and my level of awareness, my level of consciousness rises, I can start to see through that. Right? But you can all see that whatever's emerging for you will probably be uh, your, high, your, your highest, your highest level of awareness, your highest level of consciousness at the moment. And they're all just steps. So for example, I see Jared's got a question as well. So I see, for example, when I meditate, and I just allow whatever's emerging to emerge. Um, I can, it's often, I find it's often, uh, it's often not the, not the best way to do it if I'm to meditate on something. And so I need an answer for this. So, cause if you need an answer for a million dollar business, but all, but you're still, but you still have the fear of judgment you're not going to get the level of, you're not going to get the idea for a level of a business of a million dollar business because you haven't, because that level, the million dollar business is going to require a lot of judgment, right? A lot of people are going to judge you. So what your meditation will emerge out of you are the steps, right? You'll start to feel this judgment that you can feel and process, right? You'll start to feel that. And it's only when you overcome the level of, you, you overcome the, the pattern or you resolve the internal pattern that's to do with judgment or to do with failure or to do with success that you start to find high levels of consciousness where these ideas will come to you. So whatever's emerging, you can almost imagine it like a step ladder, right? So whatever's emerging is meant to emerge. And you can trust your internal guidance system that what's, what's emerging is meant to emerge, right? Trust that because what you, what you'll find is that when you do that, you'll have less uh, resistance because what a lot of things are emerging, like, like I explained before, you'll have something emerge, then you'll have a side of you that has the judgment about what's emerging, right? You'll have this persona that emerges or this pattern that emerges that you're meant to look at and they meant to look at, see, hear, love. And then there'll be a side of you saying, is that false? Should I not be doing that? Should I not be uh, feeling that? Should I be feeling something else? All right, feel all of that, feel all of it. But Jared says, how do these personas affect our success or failure in life? For example, in business or relationships? Great question. Um, you can start to see that as well, Jared. So for example, if something is if you have a pattern that's conditioned and that's your go-to in which we describe a, a personality or a trait, what happens if that's your go-to, there'll be something you're neglecting. And that side of you that you're neglecting also has some qualities and properties that you can use. That's also a side of you. That's also a side of you that you've just neglected it for so long, you've forgotten that, right? So for example, a lot, of, a lot of people who have the achievement mentality have also forgotten to relax, that the body needs time to relax. The body needs time to, uh, to just replenish, right? The ability to see things from a different point of view. When we're working our business day in, day out, nonstop, it's very, very hard to see different ideas, endless possibilities, right? Very, very hard. It's very hard to do that. Also someone who's very lazy or what we describe as lazy, very relaxed, very uh, 
easy going and going with the flow has conditioned that side of them in which they in which they have neglected the side of them that's goal oriented that can achieve that can uh, hustle make it happen so often what we're looking at here are the ways of solving challenges in which we haven't done before hopefully that makes sense So just feel that, feel all these sides of you coming out, feel the love of all these sides of you. Feel the love, be willing to feel unloved and have that as a, have that as an open space. What you'll find is that when you're starting to take action for the rest of the week, or whatever it may be, this will start to emerge. This will start to come to your conscious awareness now. Of what sides of me have I been conditioned? What sides of me do I need to love? What sides of me have I neglected? What sides of me have I avoided? What sides of me have I made wrong? And how can I love those sides of me? Question for Stephen. So when we allow, not judge, not resist, at what stage do we let go because of this feeling this exercise has created is, is demotivating me? Awesome, feel demotivated, feel demotivated and leaving me feeling down. Awesome, feel that. It is thus easy to push down, which I know is resistance and not right. So how, so how do we how do we allow when we know that this when we know to let go and move on to a new frame? Awesome. Whatever's emerging, feel it. Feel it, right? Feel it. So there's so you're feeling demotivated, you're feeling down. Awesome. Feel all of that. This is a great uh, great question from Stephen because what a lot of people will feel, what a lot of our, our society's conditioned us to think that feeling bad is bad, right? And feeling low, demotivated, that we shouldn't be feeling that way. The way I like to describe it, it's like an orchestra. An orchestra has both high and low notes, correct? Both the high notes are not better or more preferred than the low notes. All of it's just as beautiful as one another. All notes are just beautiful. All notes are beautiful and they work in harmony, correct? We can think about our emotions in that way. Because what's emerging is a side of you that hasn't been loved unconditionally yet. Right? So if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling demotivated, if you're feeling down, that's awesome. That's the idea of it. Like I said, this morning I woke up and I felt unloved for at least half an hour, at least. And I'm willing to feel that day in, day out. I'm willing to feel that. It's just a deeper connection with myself. But we've been, we've been conditioned to think that we shouldn't be feeling that way. And when we think we shouldn't be feeling that way, we basically go to that five-year-old and say, it's wrong you're feeling that way. Or you go to that five-year-old and say, go away. A lot of you know the metaphor, the metaphor that I like to use. It's almost like if a child walks up to you in a park, if you're in a park on a sunny day and a child walks up to you, a five-year-old, and they're crying and they're scared and they want to feel, they want to feel understood or heard, would you go up to that child and say, go away until you feel better? Or would you say it's wrong you're feeling this way? Would you say you need to be fixed? Of course not, right? We would just be the loving space for them. That's why all of you are here because you're heart-centered. You're heart-centered business owners. And so when you're heart-centered, you can be the loving, safe space for that five-year-old. And not so they can feel better, but you're just being the loving, safe space for all of them, for, for them to feel how they need to feel, for them to feel what they want to feel. Right? You're not hugging them so they feel better. You're just allowing them to stay space to feel whatever they want to feel. 
right? That's what we can do with ourselves. So hopefully that happens. Hopefully that's for you as well, Stephen. When you're saying, I feel, I feel demotivated, I feel let down, right? Feel that. Be the loving, safe space for that, for that emotion. Because what's emerging when you feel demotivated is a side of you that feels unloved. Is a side of you that uh, you haven't loved unconditionally yet. Right? Even Barbara saying, I feel, I feel so sad. Uh, and then start to think of, uh, that I needed to know why. And now that I get to feel it and it's okay. Exactly. Once you get to feel it, it's okay. Feel, practice feeling sad, right? Practice feeling sad. A lot of the people see my video that I put in the, in the group where I was just crying. Like, I felt so sad. I felt so sad because uh, I was doing a lot of this work. And I allowed myself to feel it knowing that's just as beautiful because what's emerging out of me when I cry and when I feel sad is a side of me that is a side of me that's not being seen, a side of me that's not being loved unconditionally yet. Right, so see what emerges, see what emerges for you. Because that's all, this is all the internal work, trust me. And, and to answer the question before, um, once you resolve all of this, once you become that loving safe space and these patterns resolve, what fear will do, fear will only exist Fear will only continue consciously or unconsciously when it's not seen. It's almost like when you're trying to, I said this to someone on the, um, on a call yesterday, it's almost like if you have all these five-year-olds, you're looking after, let's say um, three five-year-olds, you're looking after them, right? And they're needing that love and attention. If you go, if you're getting sick of them, and you think they shouldn't be doing that and you go and you put them in a room somewhere and then you come back into the room you're in now, you may consciously feel better. You're like, Oh, thank God that's gone. The five year olds are still running chaos, right? They're still running chaos. In fact, they're probably going to be even more needy. They're probably going to be, want to be seen even more, right? They're probably going to be wanting to be seen and to be loved, to be heard with more ferocious uh, intensity because they're being neglected. What you're doing right now is you're not neglecting anymore, right? You're not neglecting anymore. And because you're not neglecting anymore, it allows them to stay space to just be who they are. And fear will, fear will dissipate in moments when it's seen, when it's heard, when it's understood, when it's loved. Not when it needs to change. You're not loving it so that it will change. You're loving it because it's all sides of you, right? It's, it's, it's ironic. I say it all the time in these, uh, in the, on these calls. It's, it's just the irony that fear will dissipate in the moments when you don't need it to. When you don't need it to, that's when it will dissipate because that's when it finally feels seen. So a lot of my clients will explain it as they finally don't need it to leave and they finally want to feel it and then it starts going away and they're like, where are you going, right? Where are you going? I need to learn from you. I want to see you. I want to, I want to hear you. I want to love you. And it just, it's, it's moving away. Like, where are you going, right? It's really, really interesting. But when that dissipates, a different, a, a different level of uh, creativity and space emerges for you to just be in flow for you to have those business ideas, for you to get on a call with a, a client or a prospect and just be open hearted. And from that place, you can sell. From that place, you can market yourself because you're coming from such a vulnerable, authentic place where it just resonates with their heart, right? You're not coming at them at their, with their head, you're coming at them with their heart. That's what people need these days. That's why I think this group is so powerful because we've just got such a heart-centered uh, community and everyone's interacting and, and, uh, and being engaging. So hopefully this resonates with a lot of you. Hopefully when these sides of you emerge, there's different steps to this, which I might go into future calls. 
but giving yourself that safe space is really powerful to just feel all of it, to love the side of the view that you can start to see that you've neglected and start to see if I love that side of me, what qualities that I, what qualities can emerge out of me that were always part of me. They were always part of me. I've just been neglecting. Think of the amount of energy you will have when you, when you stop pushing sides of you down. Super powerful. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll share that post right now in the group. I'll put that post up. And if you guys could uh, comment, look through the list and comment which ones resonate with you. Cause this will help a lot of you. What we might do is those who share similar qualities, those who share similar traits, those who share similar personalities, maybe you guys can get on a call together and talk about it, talk about, and identify where it was and how it is you, you, you develop this pattern, right? Maybe you can start sharing some things with each other, start to really communicate this at a different level because the more you communicate with this, the more you're aware of yourself, the more things will start to emerge that are meant to emerge, right? So I might, So I'll publish this now. I'll put, I'll put the post up and, um, and basically you can start to see, you can read the list, right? Read the list that's in the, in the, um, you can read the list of what it is and see which ones are a pattern, see which ones are a pattern for you and then comment and, and ha let's have a discussion about what that means, where, where it's come from. If you want to openly share why it is that uh, you developed that pattern, why it is you developed that characteristic, how it served you up until now, all of these have served you, right? All of these have really served you. And it's important to recognize that. It's important to recognize that uh, not to make yourself wrong, not to make, your, not to make this a harsh judgment on yourself, but realize that these patterns have immensely served you until now immensely served you that helped you feel loved helped you feel safe helped you feel um enough up until now right that's really really powerful so thank that side of you thank that side of you and what you'll see is that the side of you that you have conditioned and the side of you that you've neglected will actually start to come together because they have a, sh a similar goal they know the outcome is a better quality of life. They know the outcome is a deeper connection with yourself, right? They have, they have similar, they have a similar outcome and you can start to recognize that when you start to, um, when you start to notice it. So let me make sure this is uh, posted so that you guys can start, start engaging, start engaging with each other as well on this topic, because it's going to be really, really um, powerful for a lot of people. I don't think it's posting. Technology, hey? Maybe I'll need to do it for my computer. But hey guys, um, does anyone have any more questions? If you have any more questions, I'd be more than happy to, uh, to discuss it, to talk about this. Maybe we can even, if you even wanna jump on a call, I'd be happy to do that as well. Um, if you want to have a quick chat, but this has been really, really cool. And I love how much you guys are engaging and how much you're actually willing to dive in deep into stuff. This is, it's really, uh, it's really powerful how you can, how you, how you're willing to dive in deep and study what's, what brings up a lot of fear, right? Okay. The computer does the work. So I've just posted that guys, I've just posted um, the photo. So have a look through it, even more, more of those qualities and, um, and more, of those, uh, more of those personality traits and see which ones resonate with you and just comment on that post and just let everyone know what it is that you're feeling, what it is that you resonate with. Um, if you wanna share why it is that uh, you think this uh, was conditioned and where it came from. That'll give you a different level of awareness as well. And then, uh, and then start to love all sides of that. 
right? Start to love the journey that you're on. Start to love what's emerging. So let me read a few things here. Are you saying we need to make both sides even? I'm not saying we need to make them even. They're already even, right? In the, in the spiritual world, they're already even. You're just consciously decided which ones uh, you want to condition or not. Um, but you want to love all sides of you equally is probably what you're saying. Definitely, you need to love all sides of you equally and that will be able to give you the space um, for you to consciously choose which pattern you would like to, uh, which qualities within yourself you would like to use in certain scenarios rather than one being a go-to, right? Public exposure equals <laughs> pure vulnerability. Steven says, awesome. It's okay to have both sides of the coin. Even if you don't have both sides of the coin, there is no coin. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Sorry if I couldn't get to everyone's questions, but we might finish it up there. I'll see you guys in the group, see you in the post. It's awesome how much you guys are willing to dive in deep and jump on these calls live. Um, I, I've been loving them. Um, I'll continue to do them for sure. Uh, for those of you who would love to get, um, a lot of you are already on there, but if you'd like to get reminded with the updates, reminded with the calls, reminded with the correct links, the activities in the group as well, um, I'm using the, the Facebook uh, Messenger bot to make sure you're all updated with those sort of things. Um, and I've got a lot of, a lot of uh, topics planned that that's, goes a bit more deeper than this as well. The more I start to study this stuff and do my own work, I'm loving the ability to share it with you guys so that you guys can all benefit and you guys can all start to learn a different side of yourself. And, and obviously the byproduct of that is a different level of business, a right? different level of value you can give the world, different level of insight and creativity and flow and alignment. Um, so I'm going to continue to get on these calls and share what it is that's coming up for me. And hopefully, and hopefully, uh, you guys can, you guys are loving the, the different level of awareness, different level of consciousness that we're all starting to achieve. So thanks so much guys. I'll see you on the post. Uh, I'll see you in the group. And, um, if you, if you want to set a timer and a calendar for next week, I'll see you on next week's call. Thanks so much guys. I appreciate it.